Hello, my name is Gerard Berthe. I'm an outbound product manager in the ITOM business unit at ServiceNow. This presentation may contain forward-looking statements. This is the first part of a series of three videos on getting started with ServiceNow ITOM Health without any prior discovery or CMDB. Many ServiceNow customers have told us that they will deploy ITOM Health only after they complete a full discovery and a full service mapping to first create a healthy CMDB. While we do not object to that approach, this series of videos is actually to show you that you can deploy ITOM Health and benefit from its AI ops capabilities right away without any initial discovery, any service mapping or CMDB, and how you can gradually add elements in your CMDB, either manually or automatically, to further benefit from additional AI ops features. So let's jump into the first scenario. We will create a service from the service portal and we, we will visualize that service in operator workspace. We will then generate alerts against that service, alerts of different severities, and we will see this, those alerts in operator workspace and how AIOps was able to automatically group those alerts uh, right away. The business outcomes obviously is to show you that you can deploy ITOM Health right away in in production without any prior discovery or CMDB. And the end result is that your operators will see a reduced alert noise because of the alert grouping. This will consequently reduce their workload and allow them to focus only on the primary alerts. Now let's jump into the demo. This is where I want to create a service using a service catalog in the service portal. So I select the register application service, which I created, which only asks me for the name of a service. I will, for that uh, purpose of this demo, I will call it production and I will submit it. In operator workspace, I still have zero services, but as a service is created, it's going to show up in my operator workspace and I can look at the service details. Everything looks good no related alerts for the time being. So let's create some alerts. First, I'm going to create an event uh, from Nagios as if it came from a monitoring tool. I'm going to set it with a minor severity. Let me clear the time of event. The description will be a minor event from Nagios. And in the additional information is where I will specify the name of the service. So this is a very simple JSON document where I say service and the name of the service. That's it. All right, so here I'm simulating with this form, generating an event into item health. I save it. And that event goes into ITOM event management, is processed, analyzed, and then an alert is generated out of it. If I really reload the form, I can see that there is alert 167 and that the event was associated with the service production based on an event rule that was also uh, defined for this purpose. So if I go back into workspace, I see that now my if my service has one minor alert. If I click on it and refresh the page here, there is one related alert, number 167. And if I select this alert, I see that it is associated with the event which I just generated. Now, let me send another event now, let's say from Zabbix. And I'm going to say it's a major alert. Let me clear the time of event. Let me say that it is ready to be processed. I'm clearing the alert value, saying it's a major event from Zabbix. I'm still leaving the service reference and I'm using insert and stay so that that event now is being sent to item event management being processed and it will be uh, converted into an alert when i reload the form i should see it 
168, alert 168, and that event is associated with the service production. Going back into operator workspace, I can see that now my service has turned to orange, which is major. If I click on it, I can see that I have two primary alerts, one major and one minor. Going back into the service details, I have, I can see the two related alerts here, right? The 168 and 167. Now, if I, let's wait a little bit and see what happens. Okay, so back into operator workspace, I still have one my service with a major alert, but now all of a sudden, I only have one primary alert of major severity. What happened? Well, let's look at it. Remember, I had two related alerts. Now, if I refresh the page, I find that I have one related alert and it's 169. The group is automated, meaning that the correlation took place and AI Ops actually grouped the two alerts that are generated into a, a new alert. So if I click on this alert 169, I can see that it has two secondary alerts, which are the alerts that are generated from Nagios and Zabbix. So this is a very important uh, feature, which shows that uh, as you send events, the uh, uh, AI and ML capabilities and the AI Ops capabilities of Item Health are uh, kicking in as needed. In this particular case, it grouped two alerts in, under one primary alert, thus reducing the, the event noise and the number of alerts that the operator has to deal with. Thank you for your time. This concludes part one of a series of three videos on getting started with ServiceNow Item Health without any prior discovery or CMDB.